So welcome back to part four. Um, in part four, we're going to do secure shell. So um, if I, I've cleared my terminal here. Uh, if I try to secure shell into either one of my IP addresses for my uh, router, and uh, it's on 1601, we get refused. We get refused because, of course, we haven't set up SSH on this uh, actual router yet. So, on our router, to do that, we want to set, uh, let's just do a show interfaces. Lovely. They're both there. They're both up and running. They're both pingable. We want to go into configure again. We want to set service Oops, if I can type. My typing today is appalling. Oh, done it again. Set service SSH. That says set the service up. Now we want to say set service SSH port. Now port 22 is the default, but everybody knows that. So again, for security reasons, just choose a port. I'm going to choose one, 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 one. So five ones, that's where I'm going to set it up. And then I'm going to say show service. SSH. There it is. It's, on, it's going to be on port 1111. I'm going to commit those changes. So we can see that secure shell service has begun on that machine. I'm now going to save it. So that's saved. It's saved to the configuration file so it will be boot persistent. So I'm going to bring back my terminal here if I can find it. Yes. Uh, and on my terminal I am going to SSH but I'm going to give it a minus P for the port I'm going to. 11111 was the port. I have a user R1RT at and we can choose either one of those addresses. I'll go in on the 1601. That's a better response straight away. We want to add that and our password was general. And we're in. We can do a show interfaces and that is now secure shell set up onto our Viata virtual machine. It would be exactly the same if you were using it within software. So what have we got left to do? Um, we got to set up the routes. So to do that, we got to set up some uh, well, some machines. We got to set up uh, the damn small Linux machine, and we got to set up our Windows Seven machine. So return in part five, and we will set up our two machines. Uh, this was a really short part. Uh, thanks very much and I'll see you in a minute. Welcome back. Uh, this will be tutorial 13, part 4b, because part 4a was so so short. Um, welcome back. Um, it remains to create our two hosts. So if you remember, what we were trying to do here was to set up a Viata, which we've done, uh, to create two networks, which we've done, to configure those interfaces, which we've done. We now need to create the two machines, a Windows 7 and a damn small Linux machine. Now we did download earlier, as you can see here, some uh, machines. There's a damn small Linux one, 4410, and a Windows 7 one. Now, this isn't a tutorial for VirtualBox, so uh, I won't spend too long showing you how to set these up, but essentially it's tremendously simple. Um, what you want to do is go into VirtualBox, into the VirtualBox Manager, and you can see here I've got my two machines already set up. But how did I do that? Well, from the download, you simply go New. Uh, the first one was a, a DSL uh, machine, and you choose Linux, and it's a 64-bit Debian. You go continue. Uh, it will need nowhere near that amount. Um, whoa, that's my mouse being far too 
uh, efficient. Continue, choose 64 meg is more than enough for damn small Linux. And instead of creating a virtual hard drive, which is what we did to create the Viata, uh, what we actually want to do is use an existing one. And then you just choose it. So you go to download and you choose your VDI machine. You go open and you go create. You just hit create and that's it. It's done. That's simple. Um, we don't want to do that. You do exactly the same for the Windows machine, um, in which case it would be Windows machine. Um, we chose a Windows 7 64-bit. Same again, continue. Uh, this one probably need 128 meg, maybe 256. It is Windows 7 and it's heavy graphics. Use an existing. Again, choose the machine this time it'll be in downloads and you'll unpack that Windows folder. Um, when you unpack that Windows folder it will have a win7.vdi in there and you will be able to go create that one as well. So this is about Viata though but that's how you create these two machines. So I'm going to boot up the DSL host first. Now what you want to do is check first that the network is set on adapter 1, enable it for host only adapter on VBoxNet 0. VBoxNet 0 is our 172 network. Allow the VMs in this promiscuous mode and click OK and then just power this machine up. That'll take a couple of minutes to actually boot up. Do, do, do. There it is. Pretty much it's there. You'll notice as well, look, it actually said five lines, four lines from the bottom there. Network device ETH0 detected, and it's done a DHCP broadcast. Now, remember when we set up, and I'll, I'll show you as opposed to uh, talking about it. When we set up our preferences our networks in vbox we set up a dhpc sorry a dhcp server for the 172 network on address 100 and we said give out addresses between 101 and 254 and we did exactly the same for vbox net 1 but this one was giving out addresses between 101 and 254 on the 192 network so I just wanted to point that out again because it's been a while since we set those up, about 20 or 30 minutes ago. Um, the password, you know, it's, it's root and T-O-O-R for the DSL machines. And here is damn small Linux. First thing you want to do is down here, disable mouse integration. That then locks your mouse into this window. And we can open up an X term. Now, what do we expect to see when we do an IF config? We expect to see that there will be an interface with a 172 address, ETH0, and it should be 172.16.0.101. Because <clears throat> it's the first, excuse me, it's the very first address that has been given out by the DHCP server. And indeed, there it is. So because it's on the 172 network, we should be able to ping uh, 172.16.0.1. And we can. Perfect. So that machine's up and running. To get out of this, by the way, to get out of the locked screen, it's uh, on, on a Mac, the, the left-hand side command key, and that gives you your prompt back. So I'm just going to pop that over there. We have, in fact, I'll leave it so you can see it's still running here. And we're going to start up our Windows 7 machine. So again, we've configured it on VMNet 1. We can just double check that here by going to the network piece. Adapter 1, VBox Net 1, promiscuous mode. So we should, when this fully boots up, expect to see 
an address of 192.168.56.101 because that's the first address that will be given out in the um, in the address range for the DHCP server that we set up in VBOX on the 192.168.56 network. So um, I'm just going to set this, just my, my bugbear, I'm going to set this back. Um, if we go to uh, command prompt and we do an IP config, indeed there it is, 192.168.56.101. So we should be able to ping 192.168.56.101. Dot one, which is the interface on the router on our 192.168 network. Yep, we can see it. So can I see 172, which are native interfaces on our virtual router, so we don't need to set up any um, static routing. It will just automatically see both interfaces directly connected um, we can go back and see that if I can find my terminal. There it is. Here's our router. We can do a show IP route. And here we can see directly connected networks, 172 and a 192. So I'm just going to push that again out of the way. Our other DSL one is still up. 172.16.0.1. And it fails. We'd expect to see it fail because we're not on that network. We also would expect to see it fail because I noticed as well on the IP config, we haven't actually got a default route for this machine. So that would also mean it's not routing, it's not sending packets to be routed to a default gateway. So how do we set that on our Windows machine? Well first of all we want to check as well that we don't have any firewall running because it will stop our ability and I turned this off earlier so it should be off but just to show you, you will turn off your firewall, both of these make sure they're turned off or none of this is going to work. We want to start our command prompt. I've right clicked here and run it as administrator. Agree with the warning. Now we're actually running as an administrator. We want to add a root. So root add. Uh, it's a default root. So it's four zeros. You say mask on Windows rather than net mask. It's just one of the foibles with these commands. And our default route for this network is 56.1. Okay, now, oops, oh, of course I haven't got it in my buffer because I was in a different uh, command window. We should be able to ping 172.16.0.1. Yes we can see it because now we have a default route from this machine to the router on the 192.168 interface. The router knows about its 172.16 interface on layer 3 so it, is, it has allowed us to ping that address. Can we ping the other machine? It was on a 101. No, we cannot ping the other machine. The request is timing out. Okay, now that could be for several reasons. So let's go and see what our. I will leave this one down here so you can see it's still running and go back to our DSL machine. So can we ping the 192.168.56.1, the interface on the router for the 192 network from this damn small Linux machine? No, and it's unreachable. 
Why is it unreachable? Well, we haven't got a route on this one either. So we've not configured a route for this particular machine, which will be its default route. Um, so we want a route add on Linux, its default gateway um, one or oh, nine two one seven two dot sixteen dot zero dot one root add default gateway. Yeah. Okay. Now we should be able to ping it, and there it is. So can we ping one oh one now? Now that we have routing going in both directions, so it's static default routes on our two machines on the DSL host and on the Windows machine down here. Oops, down here. So we have default routes on those machines, telling them where to route to. And we have a router that is configured to allow two directly connected interfaces. So it should automatically start routing. And there you have it. We can ping through in both directions now. I'll leave that one running and I'll set this one running. There you go. We now have a Viata routing between those two machines. So what I want to do now is show that that is actually the case. So where's our Viata? I want to slim that one down. I want to bring back our actual console of our Viata. There it is. And I want to prove that that is the case. Well, why don't I just power off this machine? to show that it isn't just being caused by VMware, uh, it's VMware, VBox. There you go. So without the Viata running, we're getting nowhere. Because of course, oh, destination host unreachable, yeah. That's what it was. I thought it said it got a reply for a second, but it didn't. It's unreachable which is exactly what I'd expect. I'm just too used to Linux doing this. Um, so there you can see, without it up, there's no routing going on because our router is routing the packets for us at layer three. Thanks very, very much. I hope this was useful. We'll now be able to go ahead and start learning more commands about Viata, start learning about access control lists, start learning about natting, uh, one of the next videos I want to do is now add a bridged adapter on the Viata, uh, our virtual box Viata, to show and allow that one to get out to the internet and then allow these two machines to route through the Viata to uh, pick up uh, Google 8888 for DNS and to have routing out to the internet. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope this was useful. This is how to start playing around with creating a sort of a mini software within your own virtual box environment uh, and allow you to start learning all about the command structure and all about Viatas so that you can really understand how to set up, as I said earlier, all kinds of crazy on Software, IBM Software. Thanks very, very much. My name's Eamon Killian. Thanks for watching.